Welcome to r slash entitled people where this 30 year old master student tries to get her 18 year old sister a freshman in college to write her entire master's thesis for her in three days for $20. Unbelievable it really is. Entitled cousin wanted me to do her master's thesis in two days. I, an 18 year old woman, am a freshman in college. My cousin, who is 30, is taking up her master's degree. She had to pass a thesis paper. The thing about my cousin is that since she was the golden child, she could get away with anything. She just throws money at someone to have her way. She, someone taking up a master's degree, wanted me, a freshman, to write her thesis. We all know that this is unethical and it would get her barred from graduating if her professors knew about it. But since I was curious, I asked her what she needed help with and when the deadline would be. She told me she wanted me to write her thesis. I said I could help her, but not to the point of doing the whole thesis. She told me it was already due in three days, but she can pay me well. I asked her how much and she offered me $20. $20 for a whole thesis that's due in three days. For context, academic writing services in our country is around $2,000. That's just the base price. So rush pricing is a lot more. It also takes at least a month to write. This makes the task not only impossible, but she'd also be grossly underpaying me. I declined, obviously. I was just curious to see how much the pay was going to be. Also, I wasn't really well versed in the field that she's studying in, so I don't know how she thought I was going to help her. She threw a fit and told me that if I wasn't going to do it for her, I needed to find someone that will. I looked for groups that take up academic writing services, but she refused. I think she knew that if she were to ask a professional to write her thesis, she'd have to pay a lot more. She wanted someone that I personally knew so she could just pay them a similar amount. I just ended our conversation by saying that I still had a lot of requirements to pass myself and that I was already spending a lot of time looking for people to do her thesis. I don't know what happened to her thesis though, and I never bothered to ask afterwards. A few things stand out to me about this story which are pretty incredible. First of all, the fact that your 30-year-old cousin, who has gone through the whole master's course herself, thinks that you, an 18-year-old freshman OP, would be better off at doing her thesis than she would. Second of all, the fact that she's come to you with just three days left and therefore expects you to write a whole thesis in just three days for something that you know very little about. I mean, that's mental. And then finally, that she's only giving you $20 for doing it all, writing a complete thesis. Three things that really are astonishing. I'm not going to lie. Like, what is that? You know what I do? A little bit of karma. Write the first page incredibly well. Like, really put some effort into it and make it sound as good as you possibly can. Because, look, let's be realistic. If your cousin is willing to let you write a whole thesis for her, there's no way she's going to reread it. So as long as the first page is good and it kind of fools your cousin into thinking that you've done a good job, that's all right. She's going to hand it in. Her professor, whilst marking it, is going to, you know, read the first page, be impressed, get to the second page, which you've written, but your sister hasn't checked, probably. And it's just going to be a complete load of rubbish. Just write about literally anything you want. First page, make sure it's good. Second, third, and the rest of it, just do whatever you want. Make it brilliant about something just absolutely ridiculous that has nothing to do with the course. Why not? That's good karma. Next up, grandma attempts to ruin our Christmas because I refuse to fulfill never agreed upon requests that were literally impossible to fulfill. This story is about my paternal grandmother. Let's call her Miss Furore. It takes place over the course of about one year in the blessed pre-COVID times. Before we get into it, however, let's give you some background on Miss Furore and my relationship with her. Miss Furore owns two houses next to the school I attended before leaving my hometown to study at university. My dad used to pay me to do some chores around her house, which she wasn't able to do herself due to some disabilities stemming from long-term alcoholism. I've heard stories about her borderline abusive behavior from different family members and know she was divorced five times. While working for her, I quickly realized how difficult she could be, but I always thought my family members were exaggerating. That was until this story happened. So let's get into it. Back in the summer of 2018, I was visiting my parents in my hometown. I'd been living elsewhere for about three years at that point. I decided to visit Miss Fura as I had a pretty good relationship with her back then. I was one of the few family members that was actively in contact with her other than for financial reasons, and she seemed excited about my visit as we hadn't seen each other in person for about a year. When I called her to set up the time and date, she asked me whether it was possible for me to borrow my mum's car. 
I don't own one myself, to help her pick up some furniture she wanted to add to a room for a live-in housekeeper. I cleared everything with my mum as I thought it wouldn't be much trouble. The day came and she picked up so much furniture, it barely fit into the car, but everything seemed fine. I carried the furniture into the designated room through three very narrow staircases. It was a very old house in Germany. Afterwards, we had some coffee and cake together before I left. I then dropped off my mum's car and headed out to party with some friends from school who I hadn't seen in a while. The next day was when everything began. At around 9am, I was still slightly hungover from the great party the night before. And she called me demanding to know where I was since I apparently agreed to help her assemble the furniture we bought, this was never agreed upon. She also demanded that I bring the car again, as she forgot to pick up some things the day before. The car, however, wasn't even in town, since my mum, the car's owner, needed it that day and had already left. I tried to explain to her that the car wasn't available, that we hadn't agreed to me helping her out the next day, and that I was in no position to drive and build furniture, even if I wanted to. I did offer to reschedule to another day that week, but she wouldn't have it. She couldn't accept that it was literally impossible for me to fulfill her request, and the debate got heated. Now, I don't remember the specifics, but she tried to guilt trip me, which is when I snapped, and I told her that I wasn't her flying monkey here to serve at her pleasure. She hung up after that, and I thought that that would be that. Over the course of the next week, I tried calling her several times since I still wanted to help, but I wasn't able to reach her before I had to go back to my uni town. Fast forward to Christmas 2018. I was back at my parents' place for the holidays, and the last interaction I had with Miss Furore was the phone call I just described. On Christmas Eve, my dad told me that she would be joining us for dinner, as was tradition, and that she wanted me to pick her up. Now, due to my dad's job, it was up in the air whether he would be able to join us that evening. So he added that Miss Furore would only attend if he was also there. In case he wasn't, I was just supposed to pick up the presents from her place. As it turned out, dad had to work that night, so I just went and picked up the bag of presents. I drove to Miss Furore's place, parked in front of it, rang the doorbell, and waited for her to open. This could usually take a while, since her house is big and she isn't the fastest anymore due to the aforementioned disabilities. After a longer time than usual, I called her landline to inform her that I was there. She picked up and told me she was still in the bathroom and would be right there. It took her about 10 minutes to get to the door. Usually it takes about one, during which I was waiting in the snowy streets at minus five degrees Celsius. That's 23 degrees for you Americans. When she came to the door, she handed me the bag of presents for my parents and brothers. She also asked me to wish everyone a happy Christmas and added that she was hoping I would enjoy my presents. I thanked her, said my goodbyes, and drove back to my parents' place to enjoy Christmas Eve. Evening had come. We've had dinner with my mum, her mother, a lovely woman, and my two younger brothers. We'd already unwrapped most of the presents before dinner, as we usually do. All in all, a very pleasant and typical Christmas Eve for my family. After dinner, we've started drinking homemade mulled wine when I remembered I still had Miss Furore's gifts and handed them out. Me and my brothers each received an envelope with a card in it, but suspiciously, mine differed in size and color. I opened it and read its contents. This is where the fun begins. While my brothers each received a complimenting message with 50 euros enclosed in the card, I received a scolding letter saying she was still devastated by my behavior the previous summer and that she was expecting an apology for the disrespectful way I had treated her. Remember, her demands were literally impossible to fulfill. I admit I snapped and said something that could have been taken as disrespectful. But I continued to reach out, wanting to help her while I was in town. I didn't really know how to react. I was speechless and threw the card on the table before going to grab another mug of mulled wine. When I got back from the kitchen, the older of my two younger brothers had read the card and loudly exclaimed something akin to, What the actual frick? At that point, everyone had noticed something was wrong, and I read the card out loud. I don't remember the exact wording. Sorry. I then told them about what happened during summer. Nobody could really believe how insane Miss Furor was, especially since she'd been quietly planning her revenge for about half a year. The aforementioned brother, who had some extra money due to a paid internship, asked the youngest of us three whether he needed the 50 euros, 
and offered to pay it himself as he wanted to take all three cards and throw them into Miss Fura's face. My youngest brother refused the monetary offer, but loved the idea, so that's what they did. I don't really know what happened afterwards. All I know is that Miss Furor was not expecting that reaction, as apparently no one in our family had ever stood up to her the way we did. This concludes the Christmas part of the story. We didn't really dwell on the topic for the rest of the holidays and still had an amazing celebration together. Fast forward to the summer of 2019. My parents had planned a big family reunion to celebrate a couple of important dates in their lives coinciding, major birthdays plus a significant wedding anniversary. That party was the first time I'd interacted with Miss Furore since the Christmas incident. I acted as if nothing had happened since I didn't want to cause a scene on my parents' special day with most of our extended family being there. This is a rare occasion since the family is spread around the Western world, mostly Western Europe and the US. We were together for about a week in my hometown, going to different dinner places every night, and we had a great and memorable time. I even got along with Miss Furore, albeit superficially and only in group settings. We never talked one-on-one. One evening, we were having a dinner at a really nice place, and she came over to the table that me, my brothers, and my cousins were at. They all know what had happened during the previous Christmas and were pretty angry with her. She asked whether I was willing to visit her one-on-one so we could have a talk about what happened. I was happy to, as I don't like to hold on to grudges, but I asked her that we talk at eye level, like adults, with mutual respect, as she had a tendency to twist the truth to suit her needs. I didn't say that part for obvious reasons. She agreed and asked me to call her to set up a time and date after the week-long celebration was over. A day later, I received an email from Miss Furo stating that she no longer had any interest in the conversation as it was apparent from my demands that I hadn't grown and wasn't ready to apologize. She also wrote that she wasn't able to speak to me on eye level as she had much more life experience than me. Again, I didn't really know how to process this. I still don't, but enough time has passed that I've stopped caring about my relationship with her. Up to this day, nothing has really changed about the situation. I've seen her a couple of times at different family gatherings since then, and the interactions were fine. Probably because neither of us wants to dig this rubbish back up during otherwise great family times. But the issue itself was never really resolved. So, yeah. That's the story about how I learned that the reported insanity of my grandmother, Miss Furore, was not exaggerated. It might be mild compared to other stories on here, and I'm very happy that I have the rest of my loving and supporting family to rely on, but it's still something that has changed me in a way, so I felt like sharing. Hope you enjoyed reading. Yeah, for me, the tough part is when you have situations like this, where you have one sensible person with common sense, OP, then one person is just absolutely dumb, like your paternal grandmother, and OP tries to use logic and and work out the situation, try and understand what's going on, when in reality, if you look at it completely objectively, all you have is one reasonable person and one just completely dumb person. There's no understanding of that. You can't really, like, work out what the grandma is saying or what her intentions are or even the points that she's making because none of it makes any sense. So ultimately, I kind of feel bad for OP because he's going through this whole process of like oh what have i done wrong why is my grandma reacting like this the real answer is she's just dumb and you're not like it's just as simple as that in my opinion oh my god look at this is a great comment by the way below there's a quote that i love says this commenter and i feel it fits here toxic people make you think you're holding a grudge when you're really holding a boundary. That is so apt. I feel like that's exactly what's happening here. Like this person, this grandma is making you think that you've done something wrong or that, you know, you need to change your ways. When in reality, you need to step away from her because she is just a toxic person. There's literally no need for you to even talk to her ever again. I don't think she offers you anything positive. So yeah, what's the point? They continue. She tried to tell you you're holding a grudge by not apologizing to her. But what you're doing is standing your ground and demanding she treat you with respect that you deserve as one adult to another good for you. I mean, there you go. Fantastic quote. And it pretty much sums up this entire story and your entire relationship with your grandma in one sentence. Lovely stuff. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of r slash entitled people. Really hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please let me know by dropping a like on the video and commenting your favorite thing about this episode down below. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already done so, hit this button to subscribe. I'm posting two videos each and every day throughout December 2021. And yeah, if you want more from me right away, check out this playlist of all my Entitled People videos on screen. I'll see you all tomorrow, or maybe even later today. Check out my channel. Who knows?